Guys, if you like Dragon Ball Hakai, today is the best day for you to subscribe to our Patreon. We started publishing about three pages a day of the next chapter of Dragon Ball Hakai. In addition, you will also have access to several other stories created by our team, including Dragon Ball Shinken. By collaborating with our Patreon, you help us keep Dragon Ball Hakai alive and have a lot of benefits. Become a member of our community too. The link is in the video description and in the pinned comment. I'm waiting for you there. If you like Dragon Ball Shinken and want to see the next episodes of this series being made more quickly, like now and comment hashtag Dragon Ball Shinken or anything else related to this story. If this video reaches the goal of 1000 likes and 100 comments, we will bring you the next video of this series faster. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to receive more Dragon Ball Shinken videos and other content on this channel. Anyway, let's get to the story now. Episode 42, The Dawn of Evil. You finally appeared, Daishinkan. We were anxiously waiting for you to come out of hiding, and it seems you congratulated us by bringing Gogeta too, says Evil Whis, leading three more evil angels who have just surrounded Gogeta and Daishinkan. Whis, Kukatel, Sour, and Mojito show off their evil smiles, not hiding their voracious intentions towards the two. Realizing that they are in trouble, Gogeta takes his fighting stance and transforms into his Shinken form, preparing for the worst. Come on, you rats, he challenges his enemies. Beside him, Daishinkan places his hand on his chest, unable to hide the excruciating pain he feels. Gogeta asks him what's happening. Daishinkan explains that the power of the evil seed sealed within him resonates with the evil nature of these angels. Being around them definitely doesn't make it easier to contain all that evil trapped inside. The four evil angels begin to raise their energies, their key auras radiating light and heat through the void. Damn, it looks like he won't be able to help me much here, Gogeta says tensely to himself as he prepares for the angel's attack. The first to move is Kukatail, rushing towards Gogeta, trying to land a clear blow on the Saiyan, who thwarts his attack by teleporting to surprise Sour with an attack. Despite the scare of being suddenly attacked, Sour deftly dodges, using the extremely sharp reflexes of his Ultra Instinct, quickly retaliating against Gogeta's attack, who also uses the attributes of his Ultra Instinct to dodge, then also needing to escape an attack from energy fired by Mojito. Whis tries to take advantage of the Saiyan's distraction to attempt a fatal blow through a blind spot on his back. The Shinken warrior, endowed with an excellent perceptive capacity, is able to turn around to defend the angel's attack and then maneuver his body to launch Whis against Sour, who also comes to attack. Sour manages to dodge his brother thrown at him, but is unable to avoid Gogeta's attack that comes shortly after, with the enemy's foot hitting his angelic face squarely. Kukatail goes against Gogeta by launching a sequence of attacks, one blow followed by another, all containing all of the angel's speed, strength, and skill. However, Kukatail is just a distraction so that Mojito advances towards Daishinkan, preparing a blow from which it seems that the benign angel will not be able to defend himself because of the paralyzing pain he feels. Gogeta is quick to rescue him, pointing one hand at Kukatail, who attacks him, and then the other at Daishinkan making the two angels exchange places with the teleportation. So Daishinkan appears safe next to Gogeta, and Kukatel is hit hard by Mojito. Gogeta takes this chance to accumulate a huge amount of ki in his hand, in the form of a small sphere of multicolored energy. Stardust Breaker! Gogeta screams as he launches his attack. The sphere of energy with enough accumulated power to vaporize the two angels heads towards them at full speed. However, Huis and Sour intervene at the same time, getting in front of their two evil brothers, forming an energy shield that, containing the power of the two angels combined, manages to block Gogeta's shot, causing an explosion of cosmic proportions to appear. Damn, it's hard to land a fatal attack with so many of them fighting together. Gogeta complains after having such a powerful attack thwarted. Daishinkan in agony asks him to take this chance to retreat. Gogeta says that he doesn't want to do that, 
and that it would be shameful to run away like that. Daishin Khan insists and reveals that the longer these angels spend close to him, the more dangerous this fight will become. Finally, he tells Gogeta that this is not an escape, but a strategic retreat. Furthermore, this fight has not been fair from the beginning. The sigh given by Gogeta reveals his withdrawal from that discussion. Okay, let's take advantage of all this light and energy released across the environment to escape without leaving a trace. With a teleportation, they escape from there. When the spectacle of light and energy generated by Gogeta's Stardust Breaker blast against Whis and Sour Shield finally ends, the angels notice that their enemies are no longer there. They try to sense their key to chase them. Unfortunately for the evil angels, their trails is gone. Kukatail curses this situation, lamenting that they missed another opportunity to eliminate these bastards once and for all. Calm down, brother, we says. You got a good look at that angel, didn't you? He is getting worse and worse, and soon he will no longer be able to contain our father or the evil seed. It won't be long before our father returns more powerful than ever, and when that happens, our victory will be assured. In agreement with Wee's words, the other angels smile. After teleporting, Gogeta and Daishinkan appear in the world of the gods. Gogeta asks how they ended up there, since he didn't imagine going to this world when he teleported. Daishinkan explains that he somehow manipulated Gogeta into going there. Gogeta doesn't like it very much, however, he quickly forgets that when he realizes that there is something very different about that place, the planet is in another dimension. When Gogeta asks the reason for this, Daishinkan explains that they were forced to remove the planet from the great universe as they were attacked by evil angels and were unable to defend themselves. Daishinkan says that without Vegito and him being weakened, they were unable to face all those angels. If you ask me, I'd say I could have at least destroyed some of them, Chamrus says his energetic voice echoing through the place as he approaches. Daishinkan responds to the God of Destruction by saying that even if he destroyed some angels, it would be useless since there are too many of them. Gogeta then questions what happened to the universe, since the angel and the God of Destruction fled. Unfortunately, the universe ended up at the mercy of these bastards. Chamru says, not containing his anger. I feel terrible being the god of that universe and having abandoned it like that. My desire is to return and destroy all those stupid angels. Before long, Zamasu also arrives at them, responding to Chamru saying that doing so would be a useless sacrifice. Daishinkan agrees. Gogeta begins to concentrate to feel the energies present in the rest of that place. He feels the presence of Bulma and Android 21. When he looks in the direction in which he felt the energy, he notices that there is a large technological center on the planet. When Gogeta asks what that is, Daishinkan tells him that they brought Bulma to the planet and also the Galactic Patrol's technological devices. They organized all of this in a kind of technological center. Chamrus adds by explaining that the Galactic Patrol base was attacked by evil angels who decided to take advantage of Daishinkan's weakening moment and the absence of Vegito and Gogeta to take revenge on the patrol, which also caused them a lot of problems. Fortunately, they managed to rescue Bulma and also save the patrol's key technologies. Gogeta asks what happened to the rest of the Galactic Patrol. The patrol has been almost entirely disbanded, Daishinkan responds. Gogeta gets worried when he hears this and asks what happened to Gohan and Bulla. Oh, don't worry, they're doing just fine, Daishinkan reassures him. Actually, I think you'd better see for yourself. The angel extends one of his arms, causing, through his magic, a dimensional portal to materialize next to them. When this portal is opened, Gogeta feels incredible energy escaping from it, making it clear that very powerful people live in that place. However, he realizes that these energies are familiar in some way. After a few seconds of surprise, Gogeta just smiles, extremely proud. So it's you, I guess I shouldn't expect anything less. Four powerful warriors emerge from the portal recently opened by Daishinkan. Gohan, Bula, Beerus, and Champa. 
Gohan shows a more mature appearance. His appearance has not aged much. However, there is something about him that shows great evolution, whether personally or in power. Gogeta sees in Vegito's son the seriousness of his father, worthy of a man equipped with the desire and willingness to do what must be done. In Bula's case, there is a notable gain in maturity, although she has not lost her youthful appearance. Furthermore, Vegito's daughter shows a wild determination in her eyes, reminiscent of her father's vitality and indomitable spirit. But those who are most surprising in their changes are young Beerus and young Shampa. The children of Chamrus, who until recently had a completely childish appearance and behavior, now reveal themselves in the form of two young people who, although they maintain the excitement of youth in their looks and expressions, convey great grandeur, like the powerful god of destruction that generated them. Unable to help but notice the gain in maturity and power of all of them, Gogeta immediately realizes what happened. I understand. You sent them to a dimension where time passes more slowly, didn't you? Like a a time chamber. Daishinkan says that he doesn't know what this thing called time chamber is. But yes, he sent them to a dimension where time passes more slowly. He says that since Vegito was killed and he was weakened by the sealing of the evil Daishinkan and the evil seed, extremely arduous training was started with the younger ones, since Chamrus, even though very powerful, will not be able to deal with this threat alone. Gohan and Bula greet Gogeta, saying that it has been years since they last saw each other. Beerus and Champa do the same and claim that they will soon be strong enough to overcome Gogeta. Gogeta likes to see their excitement, but warns them that they still have a lot of training to do before they can achieve that. Daishinkan invites Gogeta to go to the planet's technological center so they can talk better, and he agrees. When they arrive at the technology center, they see Bulma and Android 21 working at full speed. When Bula sees Bulma, she gives her mother a big hug, her heart full of longing. For Bulma, it hasn't been that long since she's seen her daughter, while for Bulla, it's been years. Gohan is a little saddened when he sees this, remembering his mother, who he also hasn't seen in a while. Daishinkan says that Bulma and Android 21 are working on powerful machines and technologies to help in the fight against the angels. Gogeta is a little suspicious about Android 21, asking how they can trust a woman who was recently working for an evil angel. Android 21 defends herself by arguing that she only did what she was ordered to do. She also adds that, despite everything, in the end they kind of always had a common goal, even when they were enemies. Gogeta doesn't understand what she means. Android 21 says that Campari was not faithful to his father and that in fact he always intended to put an end to Daishinkan's tyranny. She explains that Daishinkan is a very cruel father, a true despot whom everyone fears. Many angels actually respect him as a leader. However, many only obey him out of sheer terror. But Campari followed the orders of the evil Daishinkan and tried to kill us all, Gogeta retorts. Android 21 responds that of course he did that. After all, Vegito and the others were never allies. On the other hand, he needed to earn his father's respect and also work on his new technologies without arousing suspicion. However, Campari's objective in building his androids was never only to destroy Vegito and the others, but also his own father and brothers who opposed it. Among all the androids we built, Campari's greatest hope was in Cell Ultra, Android 21 reveals. Cell Ultra was our masterpiece, built from countless genetic crosses, even receiving genetics from Campari himself, an angel. Your friends told me what Daishinkan did to Vados when he found out about her genetic cross with the Saiyan, so you should have an idea of the risk Campari took by putting his own genetics into Cell Ultra. He did this in hopes of creating a perfect warrior who could evolve limitlessly, to the point where he could surpass his father and the other angels. Gogeta stops to think a little better and ends up remembering that in the final moments of his battle against Cell Ultra, he mentioned something about the possibility of them reuniting as allies, suggesting that it was built for some other undisclosed reason. Remembering these things convinces Gogeta of the android's words. Suddenly, a strong pain hits Daishinkan, who, amidst contained groans, reminds everyone that they don't have much time. Gogeta asks what their plan is pointing out that just building androids, developing new technologies and training the youngest will not be enough to defeat all the evil angels, especially if the evil Daishikan is released. You're right, Daishinkan agrees, 
and then responds. That's why our main goal is other. And we need your help for that, Gogeta. Gogeta asks what this goal is. Our goal is to bring Vegito back. Daishinkan reveals, but warns. However, some of us will probably die for this. The way Daishinkan says this gives Gogeta a shiver and he wonders what kind of dangerous mission lies ahead now. A few hours later, in the dimension where time passes slower, all that exists is a large blank space, reminding Gogeta of the time chamber in Kami-sama temple. In front of him are Bula, Gohan, Beerus, and Champa. Unlike the Earth's time chamber, in his reality, which is only capable of holding two people. This dimension can be used by up to five people. Another difference is that the time a person can spend in this place is unlimited. On the other hand, a day outside this dimension is not equivalent to one year inside it, but rather two months, a time much shorter than the one year per day in the Earth's time chamber. Looking over each of them, Gogeta decides how he will start. Bula, stand in front of everyone. The Saiyan woman gets excited when she receives the call and promptly obeys, taking a few steps forward. Gogeta tells her that they are going to start and asks her to get ready. Bula does so, raising her key and lengthening her hair as she transforms into Super Saiyan 3. How about that? My power has grown a lot, right? She brags. However, Gogeta becomes enraged. Like a rocket, he shoots his body at Bula, grabbing her neck tightly, pressing so hard that it causes a loud crack. Bula is destabilized and suffocated in shock by this attack containing such voracity. Bula isn't the only one surprised by Gogeta's aggressive and angry attack. Everyone else feels the same. Do you think this is a joke, girl? Gogeta asks. Don't waste our time. Use all your power at once, he orders, his hand wrapping around her throat tighter and tighter. Almost in desperation, Bula quickly raises her key sharply, releasing an aura of warm energy that pushes Gogeta away in an explosion of impact. Bula now displays her new transformation, very different from the one she just used. If you insist, I will start with my maximum power. This is my new transformation. I call it Super Saiyan 4. She takes her combat stance and warns, Get ready, Gogeta, because I won't hold back. If you made it this far, comment Bula Super Saiyan 4 or Master Gogeta, then I'll know who made it to the end. And if you didn't leave a like at the beginning of the video, do so now. Remembering that the next Dragon Ball Shinken video telling this complete episode will be prioritized if this video reaches 1000 likes and 100 comments. Subscribe to the channel to receive our videos, and if you can, collaborate with our Patreon or Super Thanks to help maintain this work. Thank you very much to everyone who has stayed with me thus far and until the next video.